All right, I just want to make sure. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Facebook Real Live. I've got somebody giving me a call. Um, real life going on. Anyway, I wanted to thank you so much for showing up tonight and taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and to learn how to be a real life nutrition detective. Um, I also hope that you guys are enjoying the Healthy Starts at Home Facebook group because there is so much education in this group. If you are just joining, you know, if you're just joining us, you've just joined us recently, you want to scroll back through the last few months because it started with back to school, but we have done so much with food, mood, nutrition detectives tonight, you know, reading labels. Um, oh my gosh, so many different educational uh, Zooms that we've done all kinds of recipes in the group. So I'm super excited for you guys to see all that. So I wanna introduce myself. My name is Karen Orlowski. I'm from Cumming, Georgia. And I wanna tell you my brief story about how I became a part of this community, which I've been a part of for almost 17 years. And it's such a blessing. I don't know where my health would be if um, I hadn't joined this community. And so almost 17 years ago, I was pregnant with my son. Actually, over 17 years ago, I was pregnant with my son and somebody introduced me to a way to flood my body with fruits and vegetables, which I totally didn't really get the, you know, why is that so important? Because I was a child who grew up sick and I had a nurse for a mom, which was awesome, right? Because we had the best treatment. We had the whole like bathroom closet full of all the different, you know, Pepto-Bismol and Tums and anything when you got sick. So I grew up with allergies and asthma. My biological, I was adopted. My biological mother had allergies and asthma. I had migraines. I had digestive issues. I was on antibiotics. I had ear infections. I was just a sick kid really up into my thirties. Um, and, but when I would get sick, my mom, of course, would give me treatment, right? It was all about treatment. It wasn't about prevention. I wish that she had known that if she had, you know, that if I wasn't eating the pop tarts and I wasn't drinking the soda and I wasn't eating all the you know processed foods and cereals and things like that, that maybe I wouldn't have needed all that medication. So fast forward, I was on allergy and asthma medication for a long time. When I got pregnant, it was prescription, so I had to get off of it. And my doctor said, you know, it's not safe for the baby. And I really was nervous because I had not ever been without my prescription medication. So I just really thought I was going to suffer through the whole pregnancy. And that's when somebody introduced me to a way to flood my body with fruits and vegetables, which I really didn't appreciate at the time. I was just like, okay. And I, but I also started to make one simple change because I was more worried about my baby than I was myself. So I, my first simple change was eliminating soda. That was in my mind, the worst thing that I was doing. So I stopped soda started getting more fruits and vegetables into my diet. And by the end of the pregnancy, I couldn't believe how much better I felt. And after I had had my baby, I have not ever, I haven't been back on any of the medication. It's been, um, it'll be 17 years in May since I have taken any um, allergy medication, asthma medication, antibiotics, any of that stuff. And it's just I mean, amazing. It's so freeing to know that I'm healthier at 52 than I was at, you know, 22 and 32. So how amazing, right? There's hope. Um, I want to talk about tonight a little bit. Nutrition detectives, we're super excited for you guys to learn how to read labels. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. So we don't expect anybody to be perfect. I'm sure that some of the stuff that Lonnie is going to be talking about tonight, I have in my pantry. But we try to make, you know, those are treats, right? We try to make the best decisions. We're not living off of that stuff. We're trying to eat as many fruits and vegetables as we, as we can. And some of those are treats. So I'm super excited because I haven't seen the presentation. I don't know what exactly they're going to be talking about. But um, I am going to um, hand it over to Sandy. I'm sorry, somebody's putting something in the chat. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Sandy, who has just been a dear friend of mine for nine years, and I met her at a children's museum, and I was super excited because she came to me and her son had been sick and she was just beside herself, right? There's nothing worse than a mom feeling helpless when you can't help your child who is sick all the time. So um, I helped her find a way that she could flood her, you know, her family's bodies with fruits and vegetables. And now she does the same. She has so much fun helping other families and has realized the importance of nutrition, you know, like we all have and that we're hoping that you guys will tonight. So, all right, Sandy. Thank you, Miss Karen. I really appreciate that. I absolutely love your story. And you like me are the perfect example of really what awareness 
does and how it helps uh, develop us, you know, our, our relationship with food and our understanding. So tonight, I just want to thank everyone for getting online with us. I know it's not an easy time. I myself have two little ones. So 8.30, 8 o'clock for us is a crazy wild, it's like the bewitching hour, right? They're all running around like crazy people. Um, so we really appreciate your time. Tonight, Lonnie and I are really going to focus on how you can be a nutrition detective for yourself. And I hope you appreciate this little logo. It is absolutely adorable. And it comes from Dr. Katz, one of the doctors that we work with in our um, community. And he has a really fun and exciting program we actually teach to children. And it's all about creating an awareness of product marketing. So a lot of times you look at the front of a package and when you turn it around, the front does not even come close to the ingredients or the nutritional facts that are on the back. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. But before we get started, I do wanna talk about a little bit of the statistics which are kind of shocking today. So this is Dr. Katz, as I mentioned, and one of the things that he says that for me is just profound, mind-blowing, and just wild is he says that this may be the first generation of children to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Think about that for a second. It's scary, right? The, the children today are eating so many different things than we ate when we were even children, right? Um, some of the things, the statistics that are affected, it says by age 12, many of our children have developed the beginning stages of hardening arteries. One in three children are considered obese. One in three will develop diabetes in their lifetime. And more than 25% of our children today are on a prescription drug. Also, the American, um, the American Academy of Pediatric recommends that children as young as eight years old can be treated with cholesterol lowering statin drugs. So to me, I think of that and I think, my goodness, I think I was on that same path, right? Um, after school, almost every single day, my grandma would pick me up and she would take me after school for our snack, which my snack was French fries and a hot fudge sundae with nuts from McDonald's. It's scary to think that that's what I was fueling my body with every single day. And it really has to do with product marketing, right? Because in, I mean, even today, my grandparents think that McDonald's is healthy. Um, but if you think about it, you know, McDonald's has what they call a happy meal. Um, you go to Chuck E. Cheese's and I mean, you have really great and fun things, Krispy Kreme. These are all things that you see along your drive every single day. And they're capturing our attention, whether it's the super tasty looking treats that they have or the amazing product marketing or the bright flashy lights, it gets our attention. The good news is we have a way to change, change our future and our children's future. Because one of the few choices that we have every single day is what we will or we will not eat. So some of the fun things that we talk about when it comes to nutrition detectives with the kids, and we kind of, you know, we, we made it like the fun graphic for you guys as well. But as parents, it's really our job to model the behavior that we want our, chi our children to follow, right? Because if I was at today, if I was at McDonald's every single day having a small fry and a hot fudge sundae, obviously my child is going to want to do the same thing, right? So as a parent, I do my best to model these clues in our family. And I teach my child to do the same exact thing to the point that, I mean, he knows like when he eats something, he's like, oh, mom, this is trash. I'm like, yeah, it is. You're right. But like Karen says, sometimes we can have treats, right? Just we were camping last week with my mom and we had a lot of fun food. I mean, I'll be honest, the only reason I go camping is because I love s'mores, right? But that's not something that we have every single day. So here are our uh, clues that we want to make sure that we kind of communicate to everyone today. And it's very simple things that we can model as a family and teach the kids as well. So one of the first ones is don't be, and this is what we're really going to focus on tonight, is do not be fooled by product marketing. On the front of the package, you have, oh, we got some background noise here, Karen. On the front of the package, you have these big letters and it says like whole green or um, low fat or there's so many different things that it says you know straw you know full of real fruit or real fruit juice whatever it is is trying to get our attention with those big bright colors and those cool letters and i'll be often i'll be um, honest for children it happens a lot that it gets their attention they'll put like a character on the front of the screen the front of the package just to catch their attention and the second is I mean, one of the most important things to me is the first ingredient is always the biggest ingredient. So when you think about it, when you're looking at a package, if you look at the front of it and it says, all green, real fruit, da, 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 
and you turn it around and it says the first ingredient is sugar, you're like, hey, wait a second, right? You're missing something. Thirdly, we want to avoid as many partially hydrogenated oils, high fructose corn, uh, corn syrup, anything that has like a suspicious name or something you can't pronounce, we want to be cautious of those. Fourthly, the shorter the ingredients list, the better. And one of the examples that I love is I'll tell people, if you take a package of Doritos and flip it over, the list is this long and I don't recognize half the things in there. But what I do recognize is MSG, artificial food coloring and flavoring, red food dye number five, you know, or yellow number 40, whatever the case is. And those are not really things that you wanna be fueling your body with, right? Um, and finally, fiber is your friend. So one of the things that we always wanna focus on is you wanna have something that's filling up your body. So tonight I am super excited to introduce my co-host, which I absolutely love, uh, Miss Lonnie. She is one of my most favorite people in the whole world. She is a powerhouse of knowledge and has a master's degree in health and a whole portfolio of certifications, including a holistic health coach, uh, psychology of eating, pre and post uh, natal nutrition, power Pilates, I mean, you name it and she's got it. And she actually currently teaches Pilates and other mo uh, movement modalities in her studio, which she owns. And she's been doing that for over 20 years, which if I'm looking at her as beautiful as she looks, I'm guessing she probably started teaching when maybe she was 10 years old. I don't know. Um, so tonight, her whole focus is going to be on how we create awareness about product marketing, and we don't want to be fooled by what they're showing us, right? So Lonnie, girlfriend, take it away. Hi, guys. Sandy, I just want you to like walk around and introduce me. That was so sweet. It was so lovely. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, you guys, first of all, thank you guys so much. It's so cute. Thank you guys so much for being here. I want to just sort of, I mean, I almost feel like we could just call it a day with what Sandy just said. She gave us so much good information in this, this short amount of time already. And I really want to honor your time. So I'm going to um, speak probably a little fast so we could get some stuff in. We had a little bit of a, some technical difficulties in the beginning. And I will follow up on the Healthy Starts at Home page with lots of follow-up information. Um, you know, food shopping lists, ingredient lists, answering any questions you have. So tonight is just the start of this conversation. And, you know, I have to tell you, I think it, I, I get excited to talk about it, this, but I also get really frustrated because this is something that I feel and I see with my clients all the time, right? I believe, I believe it's my mission to help spread awareness to help people live in a body they love, to help them understand that this is your home, this is the longest relationship you have and how you feed and fuel yourself matters, okay? So with that said, I'm, I'm right there with you. I am a, a marketer's dream, okay? If it's pretty and it's shiny, I wanna buy it, right? And we are trying to do the very best we can for ourselves and for our families and to, to live as healthy uh, and as aware as possible. And we are being bombarded with misinformation constantly, okay? So that's really what tonight is about. Tonight is about helping you create more awareness. And whether you've heard this all before or this is your first time, I'm super excited you guys are here. I learned so much just rewriting this presentation. So, you know, it's good to hear it over even if you know it. Um, Sandy, you could flip the slide. So these are the things, you know, there's, as Sandy mentioned, like the GMOs, the MSG, the artificials, the, you know, the red dyes, the, like we know a lot of those things, right? Those things have been kind of talked about where they're red flags for, for many of us. So the, the things that I picked tonight to talk about, I think are the things that are still a little bit confusing. And they're the ones that are misleading because they sound and seem healthy to us. Okay, so those are the ones that what, what I'm going to talk about. If I didn't cover a question that you had or something, as I said, put it in the chat right now. If we get time at the end, we'll answer it. If not, we will definitely answer it online. So, you know, before I even read through this real quick, I want to mention, I heard both of you say that, you know, you know, Karen said we're not perfect. Sandy said we like treats. I'm right there with you. Okay, and I think that that's how we need to live our lives, right? So we have a rule in my practice that's the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, you are feeding and fueling your body things that make you feel good, energize you, promote good health. And then 20% of the time, 
you know, you have the s'mores when you're camping. So, you know, just make sure you understand that as you go, we're not asking you to revamp your entire life right now. We're just trying to give you some perspective, some awareness, and then some simple solutions and how you can implement this into your everyday. Okay, so these are the ones that I picked. I'm gonna go through them. Um, let's flip to the gluten-free slide. Cool. So this slide, and you'll see I have some notes here. I just wanted to make sure that I did not miss anything when I was talking to you guys. Um, I think that this is a big one because especially right now, I think sugar-free is um, a big buzz, right? With all the keto and, and other things that other diets that are happening. And I know when I grew up, fat-free was all the craze. And I could literally eat a whole box of fat fat-free cookies and wonder why I was not full because I was not eating anything of substance, right? So basically what free means is just free, free means replaced. It is replaced by another unhealthy ingredient. And that is generally speaking, okay? So what you want to think about in this is that when something says it's sugar-free, it only means that it is free of refined cane sugar, it can still have other sugars in it, be it healthy sweeteners, let's say healthier sweeteners like brown rice syrup, or it could have artificial sweeteners in it or sugar alcohols in it, okay? So when you read on the front of a label that it says sugar-free, this is just for you to say, red flag, let me read what those ingredients are and take into consideration if I wanna put those ingredients in my body or would I rather the full sugar version, the real sugar version, or would I rather eliminate this product completely from my, you know, my day and my diet totally. So again, you know, it, this is just where you have to be really careful. I mean, those artificial sugars in, in our diet, they just cause weight gain. They cause metabolic, metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes, cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease. They cause so many things that so to be sugar free, you have to really pay attention to what you're having, okay? Um, so you can flip, let's flip the slide. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to go fast here, so. So this is one of my favorites. So my son um, is an Oreo junkie. I'll be the first to admit it. And funny enough, it's, it's when Sandy and I were talking about this presentation, this is one of the things, not this particular one, but the regular Oreos, I allow him to have sometimes because there's, sadly, there's no dairy, there's no gluten, there's, there's really nothing in it but chemicals. But this one right here that says sugar-free, you know, you look at it as a mom and you're like, oh great, my son who loves Oreos can have a sugar-free version. And then you flip it over and that first ingredient right there, malitol, is a sugar alcohol, okay? And sugar alcohols, more than anything, what you need to understand is your body has absolutely no idea how to process that. Okay. And it causes for most people an insane amount of digestive issues. So, you know, again, we're using Oreos as an example here, but we can use this in a lot of drinks and a lot of cereals and a lot of other products as well. So when you are looking for something that might say sugar-free on the outside or no sugar added, which is another big one, no sugar added means that there is sugar naturally occurring from what's in that product. Let's say a fruit right, or milk, something that naturally has some sugar in it. Very different, okay? So let's, let's flip to the next slide there. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat and we'll try to get to them later. This is a big one. Okay, so I, I really think this one's super confusing to most people. Surveys show that about over half of the population, about 65% of the population choose on purpose whole wheat products over white. We hear this over and over and over again. White flour, white rice, white sugar is no good, right? It has no, no nutritional value. And while that is true, those refined grains only have part of that entire kernel. They only have the endosperm, which is basically where you get no value, no nutritional value. Unfortunately, our wheat products often have GMOs and they've been mass produced and there's a lot of other issues with them. So you have to be really careful in your labeling here. So 100% wheat, if you see something on a package that says 100% whole wheat, 
you can be sure that it has the entire kernel, which is the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. It's the bran and the germ where the good stuff lie. Your B12 vitamins, your fiber, your antioxidants, things of that nature. Okay, so you want to look for something that has that 100% on it. You also want to look for something that is in the first ingredient, because if it's not in the first ingredient, and check this out, this fascinates me, and it's, it's, it's upsetting that between one and 49% of that product has to be made up with that. So if it is not in that first ingredient, if it's not the first thing in that label, truly you might have 10% whole wheat in that thing, and they could slap whole grain or whole wheat right on that front cover. Okay. So this is where we have to really become nutrition detectives. We have to pay attention to what we're putting in our body. Um, the other thing to take note is multigrain, right? That's a really big one. Um, and I think we get fooled by that a lot. Multigrain just means that there's more than one whole grain product in there. It does not mean that it doesn't also have a refined grain. So more than likely a whole grain, I'm sorry, a multi-grain product will let's say have barley and oats, but it will also have enriched wheat flour. And you have to be in control and charge of where, you know, that lies in that ingredients list. And if you want to take that product home with you and try it. So I did just say enriched wheat flour. And I think that's a big one that gets confusing because it says wheat. So basically that is all the good stuff removed from the wheat, taking all the way those, all those essential nutrients out, all that fiber out, all that minerals, all the good stuff, and it just leaves you with nothing else, right? So um, that's really when you look at these products that what you wanna make sure that you're looking at. So let's flip over to the next side for a second. And here's another example, and I use a lot of like kids snacks, right? That, that because I feel like that's what we're, where we're getting a lot of this marketing lately is these children's snacks. They're trying, the, the, the food industry is trying to take us into believing that we are making better choices for our children because we all want to do that. There's not one person on here that doesn't want to make a better choice for themselves and their children. And I know that. And I know that for sure by you just being on this call right now. So whole grain, look, smack right there. This is great. And then that first ingredient is with enriched flour, not even wheat, wheat's like in there somewhere, right? So you're not even getting any whole grain in this product. So please just make sure that you're really paying attention to what it says on the back when you make these choices. Go to the next slide, Sandy. Okay, so this is kind of a funny story. And, and again, I'm trying to talk fast. So someone just raised their hand if I'm, if I'm speaking too fast. But so my cousin is staying with me and um, given COVID and him not having a lot to do and he's young, he keeps going to Trader Joe's. And that's like, that's like his outlet. So he keeps coming home with stuff and he knows that he keeps gluten-free in my house. And so, and I do that more so because of not for a dietary reason, but for my son and allergies. And I should have mentioned that before. A lot of the labels on the front covers are truly really meant, or they, they started, they were placed there because of allergies. And now it's just big marketing. So if you look at this, you'll see um, that green label, that is the multi-grain bread. And of course, I can't see that part. So I'm going to look closer into my camera. Okay, so it says brown rice. It says amaranth. It says teff. It says all these good things on the front cover that you're like, oh, of course I need this product. And then the other one, the brioche bread, which is basically white bread. Well, when you turn it over, it turns out that not just from the ingredients, but from the sugar alcohol, from the fiber content, from the carbohydrate content, the brioche bread is actually better for you than the one that says multi-grain bread on the front and lists out the grains that are in it. So again, just this is just a really prime example of to not be fooled by what's on the front cover. Um, I wanna stop here. I'm gonna stay on this slide for one second because I think what, what's important is less about my story and more about the idea of general rules. So I tell my clients that don't buy a bread unless it has between three and five grams of fiber per serving, period. 
Don't buy a cereal unless it has five grams of fiber. And make sure that first ingredient is 100% of whatever it is you're doing, right? So if it's 100% whole wheat or 100% oats or whatever the grain is that you're looking for, okay? Like the 12 grain bread, I'm forgetting the, the main brand of the 12 grain bread right now, but the first ingredient is unbleached enriched flour. So sure, there's 12 grains in there somewhere, but you have to get that magnifying glass out and find them. So um, yeah, so that I think is just important rule. Three to five grams for bread, five grams for your cereal. And I think that that is important to remember that. You can flip the slide, sorry. Oh yeah, this is just it. So a cereal I think is one of the biggest misleading marketing that we have. And again, oftentimes we are feeding this to our children and, and we're seeing this multigrain cereal, we're seeing fiber one, we're seeing a lot of these. And I challenge you after this to really go back and look in your cabinets tonight when you're done. And again, I'm not suggesting throwing everything out, but become your own detective and look at the products that you have and take a look at where you've been misled and how you can make a better decision next time. You can flip. Okay, so we'll, we'll just keep on the cereal tip here. <laughs> Poor cereal. Um, okay, so protein labels. Protein's a big, big buzzword right now, right? We're seeing it all the time and protein is a very important macronutrient that we need to fuel our bodies. It helps fuel your body, your brain, um, but you need it to be in a digestible form. Primarily what I like to say, you need it to have it's all of its amino acids. You need it to be a whole protein, okay? And again, I know that there's probably some questions on some of these things. We will address them later for sure, 110%, right? I will help you understand what product, what foods out there like uh, quinoa or, or avocado that have the um, complete amino acids, right? So we'll talk about some of these things or which whole grain products are the best products to have, right? Which are the breads you should go for. So we will get into all of that. I promise solutions are coming. Um, but let's look at this for a second because this is, this is, I just laugh at this. So Cheerios, protein, regular Cheerios. And you can see calories are similar. The regular Cheerios has a little bit more fat. Carbs are similar. The regular Cheerios has more fiber. But look how much sugar the protein Cheerio has. 17 grams of sugar, 15 grams more than the regular. And then you can see on the label that seven grams in the protein and then only six on the other, that's not much of a difference. And I'm sure you're paying a premium for that big protein, you know, bold face writing on the front. But here's my favorite part. And I think this is hilarious. So you see on the front cover, it says 11 grams of protein, but on the back label, it says seven. And you know why? They're including the milk that you're putting in here. And that's how they're getting to that 11 grams of protein number. So you are being marketed to, to think that you're getting that much more protein than the regular Cheerios, but yet you're getting that much more sugar. And without getting too much into the glycemic index or anything like that, but sugar turns into carbohydrates in the body. You know, that carbohydrates can spike your insulin, cause you to have cravings out of control and essentially cause more fat in the body, right? So we really want to be careful of some of those things. All right, that's my protein top. Okay, I think this is actually my favorite one. Have I said that a few times yet? Um, so all natural. So here's the best part of all natural. It's two great words put together to confuse you into thinking it's healthy. There is no regulation on all natural, okay? There is absolutely nothing that the FDA or the USDA says about all natural from a definition perspective. There's some things out there. Typically all natural would mean it doesn't have an artificial ingredient, but check this out. It doesn't have an artificial ingredient, but it can still have pesticides, antibiotics, growth hormones, other additives. I'm just gonna pause there for a second because over half of the population correlate all natural and organic. They are not the same. All natural is a marketing ploy 
Okay, so you can see this Nature's Valley, it says 100% natural, and then it says high source of fiber, and it says all these great things. Okay, so the first ingredient is whole grain oats, great, kudos, but then sugar. Uh, I can't see that far, but let's say that says corn flour, corn oil, honey, soy flour, brown rice sugar, 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 baking soda, natural flavors, which is another great one, which means don't buy, okay, natural flavors, don't buy. So here's my rule of thumb. If it comes in a box, a can, or a drive through it is not natural. If it comes in a box, a can, or a drive through it is not natural. Okay? People buy all natural being duped that they are getting something that's healthy. It's 48% of the population believe all natural is healthier. Okay? 43% believe it's organic. So it's really important to understand this label is on everything right now. I, I cannot find something that doesn't say all natural that is trying to compete in the health market. So just be really careful with that one. Um, okay, I saw someone's on there. Yes, all natural flavoring can absolutely a thousand percent mean MSG. I just happened to see that question. So if someone asked another question and I didn't see it, I wasn't ignoring you. I just looked up at the right time. Okay, so real fruit juice. This is another one that again, three really lovely words, real. Well, okay, what does real mean? It's, it's legit, it's real, it's not fake, right? Real, opposite of fake. And fruit juice, right? Things that we like. However, to put that real fruit juice, that made with real fruit juice on a label, all you literally need is like one blueberry. And then it could become, the FDA says that's okay. So there is no real dictation of how much actual real fruit juice is in that label. So again, really become that nutrition detective here and be aware that you're probably getting a lot of high sugar processed stuff in things that claim to be real fruit juice. Okay, let's start getting into the good stuff. Organic. Organic basically means free of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, other artificial stuff. Is organic your best bet? Very close to your best bet, yes. Okay, we want to be antibiotic free, hormone free, GMO free, pesticide, pesticide free, you name it, right? We don't wanna ingest those chemicals into our body. Let me explain a little bit about what I hear a lot with with organic, I can't afford it. It's not accessible where I live, okay? So this, I don't actually even know who came out with the Dirty Dozen or the Clean 12, but I'm glad they did. Um, so the Dirty Dozen is really helpful and I really tell a lot of my clients that. I also tell them if you're going to peel something off, typically it's okay for, you know, if you're not eating the skin or, or the rind of something, that that's probably okay. But the Dirty 12 are the most sprayed, filled with pesticides and other, other sprays, other carcinogenic sprays that you want to eliminate. We will put this up in the uh, Facebook page for sure. You can also Google it. It's the same everywhere. This is not our list, okay? So these are things that you want to, if, if you can, have organic. So organic means on an organic label that 95% of the ingredients are organic. If it says made with organic ingredients, 75%. So you just got to check that out. The thing that blew my mind, and honestly, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I really learned this in this community. And this is one of my, it's been one of my greatest gifts participating in this community because I, I constantly learn so much and I'm so inspired by everybody and their willingness to share their information because we are all on that same mission. We are all on that same journey to live our best lives to love the body we live in and to spread healthy living, right? That's just the truth, right? And I know you are here too, cause you're here. So organic, they check the soil one time. In something that I learned on here, which is called NSF certification, they check that process three times. 
So what we like to say is NSF is better than organic. So I would also challenge you when you're looking through the things that are in your cabinet tomorrow or tonight or whenever, see what you have in there that also says NSF. And you can be assured that that is your best choice. Okay. Let's see what we have left. What's left? Oh, vegan. Okay, good. So um, I think many of us have saw the game changers and that was like big buzz happening. And so many of my friends and clients wanted to go vegan. I love that. Go vegan, but you have to go whole foods, plant-based vegan. Don't go vegan product. There are so many products out there that I see people moving to because they're vegan and it checks that box. But what it also does is it adds your fillers, it adds your sugar alcohols, it adds your chemicals, it adds so much other stuff because remember what we learned in the beginning that free means replaced. So when you eat vegan food products, I'm sorry, they're, they're free of something, so they're replaced with something else. So what's the takeaway? More fruits and vegetables. If you wanna go vegan for health reasons or animal reasons, do it as actually eating fruits and vegetables, grains, beans, whole foods, things that come in their original form, actual, real, all natural foods. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what our takeaways are. And I'm hoping to get to some of your questions. I see them. Um, as I said in the beginning, it's really just about awareness, right? What can I take away from tonight? What can I do in my everyday life? What is one simple change that I can make to incorporate something in my life? When I coach a client, and we always do this. I always meet them where they're at. And when I coach a client, let's say I'm making this up. Let's say they're eating a donut for breakfast. Okay, so they're having a donut for breakfast. I don't say don't have the donut right away. I say, what can you add in to your breakfast to up the ante of your nutrition? Okay, maybe you have a banana and slowly we take away the donut, obviously. But you know, the idea here is, is what is that awareness? What, what can you walk away with now? Having more awareness that you are being marketed to thinking that you're eating healthy foods and how can you substitute each meal to make that meal more nutritionally sound? Okay, so awareness. That's what tonight is. That's what this community is about. Um, that is certainly, we are, I'm here, Sandy's here, Karen's here. Any questions that you have, we want to help build your awareness because then we want you to turn that around and share that with your family and your kids and your friends and so on and so forth. We want you to pay it forward. Okay. So the next thing is more whole foods, more fruits and vegetables. As I said, uh, legumes, beans, grains, things in their original state. If it has a label, it is not a whole food, general rule, okay? If it has, comes in a can, if it, you get it at a drive through I've talked about all these things, right? So whole foods in its original state is your best bet. So the more, the more fruits and vegetables you can get into your diet, the better. And then last but not least is to subsidize some of the food that you're getting, these packaged foods at home, with homemade versions of them. And now I know that probably just stressed some of you guys out big time and that's okay, I get it. It stresses me out too. I mean, I'm talking to you as a mom more than I am as a nutrition uh, coach. You know, I don't wanna deal with being in the kitchen more often, right? So the, the beauty, the beautiful piece of this is that we have solutions for you. We have a really simple, affordable, convenient way for you to bridge the gap about what you're getting into your, into your diet, I hate that word, but your diet, um, and in, into your everyday, okay? And that's Juice Plus. Karen shared her story a little bit. Sandy's gonna share her story in a second. Um, I guess I'll share my story real quick. But you know, for me, it, it was really about adding in these plant-powered concentrates into my root, daily routine and my son's that did not change the fact of me focusing on reading labels, 
making sure that the food that I put into my body felt good, not just when I ate it 20 minutes after, two hours after, that it gave me energy. It didn't make me break out. Like there's so many ways that you can tell what you're eating and how it's affecting you. And we'll get into that later when I do some follow-ups. But you'll see here um, on the back, it, these are NSF certified. So as we say, it's better than organic. You see all those whole foods that are in it. Okay, the reason that this to me really jumped out is that it is um, one of the, it is the most re researched nutraceutical company. And it's something that what we do called vine ripened. Because here we are, even let's say we're eating more fruits and vegetables into our diet. The way that they have to get off the plant and into the supermarket, there has to be lag time. And that lag time depletes their nutrition. Okay, so here we are able to pick something in its, in its ripeness when it has the most nutritional value. We take out the sugar, we take out the water, we take out the salt, we pulverize it with all that good stuff, all that skin, all that fiber, all those vitamins and antioxidants and phytonutrients. And then we make it into capsules or gummies for kids. So this to me has been a game changer. It completely was part of um, my son's turnaround to his own immune system. And that was for me when I started sharing with my clients and I hear over and over and over again, what a simple, affordable solution this is. And as a nutritionist, for me, you eat what you, what you eat, you crave more of. So here's an awesome way to not have that fight with your kids about broccoli. And here they are getting these, these greens into their diet in this delicious gummy. And then all of a sudden they're just eating their broccoli at dinner and you didn't even have to have that conversation. So that's a big one for me. Um, Sandy, you can circle back when you talk if there's anything else you wanna say. Um, and then last but not least, we um, pretty much, I, I literally live off this macronutrient shake here. We use it every morning. Um, and I call it a macronutrient shake. So macronutrients, uh, proteins, carbs, um, fiber, and then your micronutrients is, with, is your vitamins and your minerals and stuff. So they kind of work in synergy, right? The, the, the fruits and vegetables are your micronutrients and the shake is your macronutrients. You need both. Um, so this is one of the cleanest, uh, I'm gonna call it a protein shake right now for lack of better words, the cleanest protein shakes that I have seen because it's digestible. Okay, it's uh, bioavailable. You're getting all these nutrients into your body and it's not made with things that your body doesn't know how to absorb. So it's made with the most whole ingredients possible for you to get into your system. And we have a shake every morning. I make it with pancakes. I use it in my overnight oats, chia seed pudding I just posted a recipe on. Um, so we are using this all the time and this has been one of my favorite things in Game Changers. I feel completely different when I know that I get my Juice Plus complete in. And that is it for me for now. I'm gonna turn it over to Sandy because Sandy has a really awesome story about how her one simple change really um, made such a big difference in her life. And I think that that's what is important to hear. It's not so much me talking about what products to, or you know what to have or what not to have, but to really understand how some of these little small changes have this domino effect and have such a huge impact on your health. So Sandy, take it away. Oh my goodness, was I right or what? Lonnie is an amazing, amazing wealth of knowledge. I mean, every time she talks, I'm just like nodding my head. Totally ELL, right? Everyone loves Lonnie. So I don't know about you guys, but I am a super visual person. And I thought that this was an amazing visualization of what this community and what this awareness can really do for people. So on the left, you'll see in 2011, um, that was the same day I was leaving the hospital with an adorable little, adorable little baby. And I look like most other um, maternity patients who are released the day after they have a baby. Um, I felt swollen. I felt tired. I was just a mess, to be honest with you. I felt every pregnancy symptom you can imagine. I had the swollen feet. Um, my shoe size increased by half, uh, by half a size. So I had to get rid of half of my shoes in my closet. Um, I was just crazy, right? So once I had my son, we had a lot of health struggles with him, unfortunately. Um, I can remember it was just a challenge. I mean, I was the mom that Lonnie talked about. You know, I was tired. I was frustrated. I felt helpless as a mom. And I can remember times that we were sitting in my pool 
at three o'clock in the morning trying to bring down his fever naturally because the rotation of antibiotics we had and the uh, fever reducers were just not working. And it was scary. You know, there was times that he would have um, asthma flare ups and we'd go to the doctor repeatedly after getting like another shot of Rocephin because the typical um, dose of, of antibiotics that they would give everyone just wasn't working. And I would ask them, I'm like, there must be something that I'm missing. You know, I, I don't remember as a child going through this and it just doesn't seem normal to me. And every doctor that I saw, and I went to a huge practice and had multiple physicians, over 12 physicians. Every time I saw one of them, I asked the same question. They would tell me it was just a rite of passage. And it really wasn't until I met another mom who said, have you ever thought of trying to get him to eat more fruits and vegetables? Which if you have any toddler moms on here, oh my goodness, you probably just fell off the chair, right? Like I did, because I couldn't imagine at the time he was 18 months old, I couldn't imagine getting my 18 month old to down handfuls of broccoli or kale, right? Like that just seemed like mission impossible, like crazy. Um, and she, at that time, introduced me to our produce concentrate chewable, which is the juice plus um, gummy. And I was like amazed. And I don't know how you guys are. Like Lonnie said, I'm like a consumer, a marketing consumer's dream. Like, you know, anything they, they show me on the Facebook ad, I'm like, oh, I think I need this. Um, so when I found out for only $25 and 50 cents a month, I could get 20 fruits and vegetables in a gummy form concentrated for my son every single day and have him beg for 20 fruits and vegetables. I mean, it was just wild. I was like, where do I sign up? Like, give me more. Um, so we were able to add juice plus the produce concentrate to our diet. And we have seen a huge difference in our health, not only with my son, also with my husband, who at the time was struggling with high blood pressure and cholesterol. Um, and even myself, like I said, I was tired. I was um, confused. I was frustrated. And, you know, with my son feeling better, obviously I felt better. So it really changed the quality of our family's health overall. And, you know, sometimes people look at it and they say, oh, it's another vitamin. One of the things that I think is so impressive, I mean, Lonnie mentioned the um, research that we have over 41 clinical studies that are double blind, placebo controlled by reputable universities and hospitals all over the world. But one of the things that I, th I think is so amazing and so interesting is our product actually carries nutrition facts because it is a food. It is not a vitamin. So even though it comes in a capsule or a gummy, it is not a vitamin because like she said, this is vine ripened produce that is thrown into like a huge, think of like a Vitamix, a commercial size Vitamix pulverized with a lot of times the seeds, the peel and the skin when healthy for us. And it's turned into a huge, slushy, disgusting juice that I would never drink. But then the company is so brilliant. They take it through a low or they put it through a low um, cool, uh, drying process that it takes out the salt, the sugar and the water and it turns it into that powder. So those powders are either encapsulated into a vegan capsule or mixed with a little bit of tapioca syrup that turns it into a delicious vegan gummy. So, I mean, I just absolutely love it. So fast forward eight years now, on the right, I have a picture of my little angel, that little sweetie pie she just turned to recently. Um, but the same day, I just had the baby two days prior leaving the hospital. And looking at these two pictures when it comes to visualization, on the right, I'm eight years older. I feel like I look a little bit younger. I feel like I don't look as swollen. And I definitely don't look as tired, right? And I truly, truly attribute it to the information that I learned in this community and the awareness of really what are in our food products and the importance of as much as possible eating real whole foods. And honestly, our catalyst to better health was Juice Plus. Changing our, our like she said, it changes our health habits. It changes, um, it's called metabolic reprogramming. It helps to change our taste buds and helps us crave more fruits and vegetables. So on the left, unfortunately, I struggled with my son for years with his health. On the left, my son is made out of what my body at the time was craving, which was pizza and nachos. And on the right, my daughter is made of salads and smoothies because literally that is what my body craves. And that is what I eat most days when I'm not camping eating tons of s'mores. Um, but I just really honestly feel, I mean, every single person that I know needs more fruits and vegetables in our diet. And like, like Wani said, it literally is a simple, affordable, and convenient way 
to get it not only in your child's body, but also your body. And everybody knows if the mom is happy, the family is happy, right? Because we control it all. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. Lonnie, I know you had a second to go through the chat. Are there any questions you wanted to answer? You know what? Sorry, my thing is far away. Hold on. Let me see if I can look through some of these now. So before I do that, I want to just I want to just say that you know, again, I just want to honor everyone's time and it is late at night. So if you want to hop off now, I totally get it. And um, again, I will go through this. I'm going to take a screenshot and I will answer these questions in the chat, in the Facebook page later on. So you don't have to be on right now if you didn't. Um, um, so let's just see. If I can go through any of this here. Lonnie, I sent you some direct messages that were in Facebook. So you can- Yeah, I see them now. Okay. Awesome. So is whole grain better than whole wheat? No, not necessarily. Um, I think it's a personal preference um, and it's a personal preference if you want to avoid wheat, right? I. I am a big believer that most of our wheat in this country is processed um, in a way that I don't want to ingest. Just a question. You guys can see me fine, right? Because I have the chat up, right? You don't mm -hmm. see that, yes? Mm -mm. Okay, great. No, I don't see it. Okay, perfect. Um, you know, so, so I prefer grains. I prefer to have my whole grains from sources that are gluten-free naturally, like quinoa. Um, so that's a personal preference. What I, what I would say here is that what's missing from the question, whoever asked it, is it has to be 100%. So I would rather, again, make quinoa and have quinoa as my dish than have a quinoa bread that there's a percentage of quinoa in it and other things. Because no matter what happens on that road, it becomes processed. So um, I think... I think that that's generally um, a general rule, just a hundred percent. And then it's up to you about how much wheat you wanna ingest or not. Um, the next question was about Ezekiel bread. I think Ezekiel bread is a great option for bread. Um, uh, you Sprouted foods like sprouted breads are good because they're live, right? So they're not going to last as long. There's not as much preservatives in them. So you can go ahead and make sure to, if you're going to enjoy an Ezekiel bread, then sure. Again, think of that rule, make sure that there's a good amount of fiber in there, but also that sprouted bread is really important. Let's see. I think I answered that question about the natural flavors. Yes, natural flavors often can mean MSG. Um, it's just another one of those hidden words for um, any sort of flavoring to mean MSG. Uh, let's see what else, hold on. Where would I find an NSF label on a product? Okay, so I don't have, let me see if I can pull something up on me to show you. But basically when you see a stamp on your product that says certified organic, or if it would say 100% uh, whole wheat, there's an actual stamp. If you Google the stamps, right? So the, the, it's not the company put it on. It is a USDA or an FDA stamp that shows that that product, and they will look the same on all the products that have 100% wheat. They will look the same on all the products that are 100% organic. They will look the same on all the products that are NSF certified. So you'll find it typically, I mean, I think that's a marketing thing, but typically it's on the back where you see all the other stamps. Oftentimes it, because people don't know about it as much, it's not as much as a marketing buzzword. It's not like splattered on the front, it's in the back where oftentimes it'll say non-GMO, it'll say other things like that. Um, let's see what else I have here. Is whole wheat pasta okay to eat a few times a week? Um, yes, no. Uh, I, 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 my first answer would be, it honestly depends what else you're eating. Um, everything and anything is okay in my book to eat a few times a week. I am again, going back to that 80, 20 rule. If 80% of the time you are having food in its original state, food that fuels you, energizes you, then sure, have pasta a few times a week. I do, I'll, I am not a perfect eater, but 
I, I do it with awareness and I make those choices based upon the fact that I know that most of the day I've gotten in the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and phytonutrients my body needs to thrive, not just to survive, but to thrive. Very different. We run, we go, you know, I probably sleep five hours a night if I'm lucky. I mean, that's just the, the truth. And I'm, I'm working on that. Don't worry. But, you know, that's that's what. So. So, yes, have your pasta, but just make sure it's in rotation with other really whole foods in there. And then what are you putting in your pasta? Um, so, you know, the, the answer is yes. If that if that's helpful. Let's see what else. I will absolutely share the recording. Um, that is all that I see on the chat. Um, I'm not on the Facebook page, so I don't know if there's anything else on Facebook that we need to address. I think we got it all. We got just it all. Through the awesome. comments as you were chatting. Perfect. Okay. So good. thank you guys. We thank appreciate you guys. your time tonight. Have a so good evening, everyone. Again, please feel free if you don't want to put it on a group chat or whatever, PM me on Facebook. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions and we will send you some takeaways for sure. So be as active as you can on the Healthy Starts at Home page because you'll see a lot of follow-ups and a lot of you know solutions to some of those things. So you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope this helped. I hope you spread the good word. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night.